Sri Vishnu Sahasranama, name 858, is Kshama. This name was covered earlier at name 444, and I won't revisit the explanations given there, although definitely there's going to be some overlapping. According to the different roots, Sanskrit roots, uh, of how the name is analyzed, the general meaning can be given decay, he who decays, he who destroys, he who dwells, and who allows or makes capable of. Parashrabhata is continuing since the name 855, he's been discussing how Bhagavan helps yogis, especially those yogis who have not achieved full perfection, to achieve full perfection, with reference to the discussion on this point in chapter 6 of the Bhagavad Gita. So here for Kshama, he quotes from Bhagavad Gita after Arjuna has asked Krishna, what happens to someone who takes up the path of yoga but is not successful? Krishna answers, Parta naiveha namutra vinashas tasya vidyate nahi kalyana krit kaschid durgating tata gachati. Krishna says, Parta, I'm speaking to you as someone very intimate with me. I assure you that someone who takes up this path in good faith, they will not be lost. They will not be destroyed. They may be temporarily set back. But Krishna says, they'll, definitely they'll never go because they've taken up this beneficial path. They're definitely they're not going to go to a bad destination. That's for sure. One who does good does not get evil in return. Neither here in this world. Not eva iha. Not certainly here. Na mutra. Nor in the next world. He's safe. Don't worry, Arjuna. It's okay. So, Parashabhata says, this name, Kshama, gives the idea to allow, to be capable of, that Krishna allows the yogis who have not successfully completed their yogic path. He says he allows them to come up. He allows them to fulfill their effort. He... he gives them the necessary strength for this. Of course, they have to show inclination, but they, they will because that's why they took up yoga. <clears throat> Daladev Vidyabhushan gives the same meaning. He closely follows Parashra Bhatta here. Whether or not he had access to Parashra Bhatta's commentary, I don't know. Because many of the meanings that Daladev gives are very different to those of Parasha Bhatta and different to any other known commentators also. Sri Vivi Ramanujan gives a, a, a similar meaning he, he, that he, Bhagavan, makes the yogi skilled. He gives him the requisite uh, abilities to continue and come to the perfection of yoga. Shankaracharya's um, explanation at name 444 is that he's the leftover. When everything, when everything is destroyed, the whole universe is destroyed, he is the one who left, who is remaining. And here, 
at this instance of the name, Shankaracharya says that again invoking the scenario of the universal destruction, pralaya, he reduces, means he dis- decays or destroys, he reduces all beings to the state in which they were in prior to their current form. He reduces them to, uh, yeah, they, they, as if frozen in time, and a long time, and then eventually, after a very, very long time, they'll come out again with the same mindset and sanskars, impressions, and everything. Sri Radha Krishna Shastri, who often follows Shankara, he or he's like a sub-commentator on Shankara, he gives the example of decay in relation to the death of a body, just like now I'm incarcerated in this particular body and I'm at that stage of life when actually decay is going on all the time, but it becomes more apparent. Now I, this body is almost 66 years before it came from the womb of its mother. So at this stage of life, gradually the functions of the mind, intelligence, the organs, the senses, they all dwindle. Some people have very sharp intelligence, even very old. But generally, memory and uh, ability to discriminate, to make good decisions, that tends to decrease with age. So that's an example of how he decays. Grasishnu Prabhavishnucha, he says in Bhagavad Gita, the Paramatma, he devours and develops everything. The young boy will be an old man. The old man will be a young boy. This is the cycle of life. Here we're discussing about the decaying factor, which contrasts with the yogi, the other or another explanation that the yogi's yogic progress does not decay. Even if he has a temporary fall, he can come back again. His his merit remains. Then, uh, another meaning of his destroying, he destroys the wicked. So that we've discussed many times here in this commentary on Vishnu, Sahasranama, he is Jitta, he's the conqueror, for instance. There are many such names which indicate that he conquers over the wicked. Another meaning, Kshayati. Satyadeva Vashishta uses this to mean that he's the final abode for all. Again, invoking the uh, scenario of pralayam at the time of universal destruction. All living beings enter into him. Here we are in this world, we're running around, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're showing our prowess. And we all end up in the same place. And we, everyone's going to God. <laughs> Some go back to his abode and the spiritual world, to live with him, play with him, dance with him. And those who don't want to do that, they end up in Mahavishnu, in a dormant state. All their material, the whole material, their whole material body, the planets we live on, the thoughts, they're all as if destroyed, but the Atma is never destroyed. And as long as he's in material existence, there's so many desires he's cultivating over so many lives that remains with him. But he remains in a dormant situation, so that's considered destruction. Then, just the opposite of destruction, 
another meaning uh, given by Satyadeva Vashishta, who uh, he often gives understandings in relation to the Supreme Lord's interaction with this universe. So he, he says, Ksha refers to the universe. It literally means Prithivi or earth, but by extension, that can be understood to mean the universe. And then <clears throat> Ksha and then Mang. So Ksha Ma. Mang means Mane Shabdecha. Mang. So it means to measure or to make a sound. So the, these are great scholars, how they can find all these different things. So Satyadeva Vashishta says, he is the one who has established the universe the way it is. So in so many names, he, he comes to this point again and again. He is the one who has established the way it is. To measure means everything has its specific size and form and shape. And then is he's equipped it with sound also. Every living being, every entity, living entity or non-living entity. Another meaning, uh, he remains hidden among us and everything is hidden within him. That's very mystical, isn't it? No further explanation is given here. Hidden among us means he's in everyone's heart, but we don't see him. We're hidden in him means we don't recognize that we are in him. The, the universe is so vast, we can't begin to understand how we're all within him. Nothing is separate from him. Then... <clears throat> He who restrains and controls, this is another understanding of, uh, of Kshama, persons of demoniac nature. He restrains them and controls. Otherwise, they they'd completely run amok. Some kind of restraint has to... If the demons were given full reign to do just whatever they like, we have... We had the name just a few names ago, Sarvakamada. Sarvakamada. He, he fulfills all desires. That doesn't mean he just lets the demons do whatever he likes. He may indulge them in some of their demoniac propensities and fulfill some of their desires. But he's also Kshama. He's restraining them and controlling them. It's, the, the, the universe is not a devil's playground. It's, it works on under the laws of the Supreme, the conditioned souls are within the universe for their nefarious purposes, but Narayana is there to regulate it. They can't just do whatever they like, however they like, whenever they like. No. Control is there. Another meaning, he bore the earth. This is Satya Sandha Tirtha. He gave the idea that he controls the demons. He also gives another meaning that he, he, he bore the earth, he carried the earth. This, of course, refers to Varaha Dev. Now, we may say, well, we've had so many names which are interpreted here in Vishnu Sahasra, and we've had so many names which state that he restrains or controls or destroys the demons. We've had so many names which point to Varaha, Dev. Why the repetition? Well, the point to be understood here is that they're all different names and they're derived from... It's a different Sanskrit derivation comes to the same point. In other words, we're looking at the same point through the Sanskrit language from various nuanced positions. Just like I gave that example in a talk fairly recently, that in English we say tree, in Sanskrit there may be several words for tree. For instance, vriksha is a commonly known word for tree. 
It means uh, <clears throat> who is worthy to be cut, who is cuttable. And then another word for tree is padapa, who drinks through his leg, literally. So it both, they both mean the same things, but coming at the same thing from a different angle, from a different perspective. Another meaning, this is from Raguna Tirtha. He is a, the remover of obstructions in the path of cows. He doesn't elaborate upon that, but we know that Krishna, he looks after the cows very nicely. He takes the cows out and uh, yeah, if there's any obstruction in the path, he'll make sure they have a night they can roam nicely and freely. Raghunath Tirtha takes kshama to mean kshamate sahate iti kshamaha. Sahana, we have in Indian languages up to the present day, the common words sahana and kshama, kshama, which are closely linked words. Uh, they can both be translated in English as tolerating. So Raghunath Tirtha says that he who endures patiently, kshama, who has the quality of kshama, tolerance, uh, he should be called shama. He is, he is the supporter of that quality. That quality is there because he establishes it. Uh, the tolerance to excuse others, to bear difficulties, that's... Sahana is more the sense of tol tolerating difficulties and Shamar is more the sense of excusing others. They both come to tolerance. We find in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Buddhir Jnanam Asammoha Kshama. You hear the words Kshama. So I'll say the two verses together. Buddhir Jnanam Asammoha Kshama Satyam Dhamma Shamaha. Sukham Dhukham Bhavo Bhavo Bhayam Cha Bhayam Eva Cha. Ehingsa Samata Tushtis Tapo Dhanam Yasho Yashaha. Bhavanti bhava bhuta nam mata eva pritagvidaha. Krishna says, intelligence, this is Srila Prabhupada's translation, intelligence, knowledge, freedom from doubt and delusion, forgiveness, Srila Prabhupada here translates kshama as forgiveness, truthfulness, control of the senses, control of the mind, happiness and distress, birth, death, fear, Fearlessness, non-violence, equanimity, satisfaction, austerity, charity, fame, and infamy. All these various qualities are, of living beings are created by me alone. So that upholds the meaning of kshama, as who is the supporter the, he, he, of kshama, the tolerance principle. He... Because of him, we living beings are able to exhibit such qualities. Elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Mrityu sarva haraschaham udbhavascha bhavishyatam kirti shrir vak chanari nam smritir medha driti kshama. So the last word in this verse is kshama. Krishna says, this is also in the 10th chapter of Gita. I am all devouring death and I am the generating principle of all that is yet to be. Among women, I am fame, fortune, fine speech, memory, intelligence, steadfastness and patience. So in this instance, uh, Srila Prabhupada translates Kshama as patience. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada explains Purport to this verse, Mrityu Savaharashtaham, 
when one is able to keep his balance both in sorrow and in the ecstasy of joy, he has the opulence called patience, kshama. That's Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 10, text 35. All glory is to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Shama. Vancha kalpataru bhyas chakripa sindubi evacha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha. Dante nidhaya chuna kang padiyo nipatya krit vaja kaku shatam etad aham bravini. He sadhava sakala eva vihaya durad gauranga chandra charane kurutano raha. Parivada tu jano yata tata va nanu mukharo navayang vicharyamaha. Hari rasa madirama dati mata bhuvi vilutama natama nirvishama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare.